BBC Two's Sunday Night Art Zone with a definitive guide to life. Marcel Proust spent the last 14 years of his life lying on a narrow bed writing an unusually long book. Since the publication in 1913 of the first of the seven volumes collectively called In Search of Lost Time, his work has been hailed as a masterpiece and he is consistently chosen by critics and the public as the greatest writer of the 20th century. Let's take a journey back in time to Proust's Parisian bedroom to hear him in his own words as he reaches the end of his eccentric existence. Proust was once asked, if the world ended today, what would you do in your last hour? Life would suddenly seem wonderful to us if we were threatened with sudden death. Just think how many projects, or travels, love affairs our life hides from us made invisible by our laziness, which, certain of a future, delays them incessantly. But let all this threaten to become impossible forever. How beautiful life would become again. We might only have been living half a life before we face up to the implications of death, but what exactly does a whole life consist of? Right up to his death, Proust was working on his book, which set out to answer a not dissimilar question. It might appear to be a lyrical memoir, loosely based on the uneventful lives of Proust's family and privileged friends. However, what is of more interest and will occupy our attention are his underlying practical, universally applicable ideas on how to stop wasting and begin appreciating one's life. In Proust's view, there are very definite priorities that we might wish to consider. Proust can change our lives. What Proust wants us to do is to take our time to appreciate how rich and interesting the world is. He thinks most of the time uh, we walk past fascinating uh, kinds of experiences without really looking at them and studying them. And that's what he wants us to do. Days are the same, really. One rises more or less at the same time. One has breakfast more or less at the same time. The same time, time being when? Oh, I suppose 7, 7.30, mm -hmm. if, if I if missed the time. Proust's passionate pursuit of detail became apparent to people who met him for the first time and were quizzed on aspects of their life about which they had previously paid little attention. Not even a cafe? No. A swell affair. Proust is pale, unshaven, slip-faced. He asks me questions, questions. So you have finished your toilette, your cup of tea, and then? We generally meet at ten. There are secretaries behind each of the... Uh, no, mais non, mais non, n'allez pas trop vite. Start again, please, monsieur. You are collected by the car that belongs to the embassy. You get out of the Quai d'Orsay, you climb up the stairs, you enter the room, and then... Be precise, mon cher, precise. N'allez pas trop vite. So I tell him everything. The sham cordiality of it all, the handshake, the map, the rustle of papers, the tea in the next room, the macaroons. He listens, enthralled interrupting from time to time. Mais précisez, mon cher monsieur, n'allez pas trop vite. It might be a Proustian slogan, n'allez pas trop vite. And an advantage of not going by too fast is that the world has a chance of becoming more interesting in the process. My generation, of course, has read La Recherche du Temps Perdu very often and he's accepted as being the great French writer of our century. And uh, his approach, of course, is completely new on terms of time, on terms of description, on terms of using the French language with his very long sentences. 
and uh, his approach of a certain description of the reality, which is absolutely new in a certain way, and uh, one cannot write anymore after Proust uh, as I, one was writing before him. He was a great writer, I think, a very humane man, this quietly observing eye. He was very witty, he was extremely witty about sex and love. Um, you know, like Stendhal, he observed his own often absurd processes with a cool and amused eye. I never get tired of Proust. I, I read him for sheer entertainment. Even the most fervent admirer would be hard pressed to deny one of Proust's most awkward features, length. Proustian sentences are often snake-like constructions, the very longest of which, located in the fifth volume, would, if arranged along a single line in standard text, run on for a little short of four meters. The sad thing is that people have to be very ill or have a broken leg in order to have the opportunity to read In Search of Lost Time. Good evening and welcome to this year's finals of the All England Summarized Proust competition. Good evening and welcome! Well, as Klaus would say, la malade imaginaire de recondition et de toute surveillance et bientôt la même chose. Each contestant this evening has a maximum of 15 seconds to summarize à la recherche du temps perdu. And only Klaus over there, you can see exactly how far he gets. <laughs> so let's crack straight on with our first contestant tonight. He's last year's semi-finalist from Luton, Mr. Harry Bannard. <laughs> Restating as it does the concept of intemporality. In the first volume, Swan, the family friend. Oh, oh, I mean, well tried, Harry. Welcome, Dad. And unfortunately, he chose a general appraisal of the work before getting on to the story. And as you can see, he only got as far as page one of Swan's Way, the first of the seven <laughs> volumes. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to welcome the last of our All England finalists this evening. From Bingley, the Bolton Choral Society and their leader, Superintendent McGough. <laughs> All right, Bingley. Remember, you've got 15 seconds to summarize Klaus Werner's charity. Starting from now. Klaus in his first book wrote about, wrote about. He wrote about, 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 he wrote about,